What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle 4. I, I felt like playing Subnautica today. I'm not even going to lie to you. I've been playing around with it on stream a lot, and I've been having a really, really good time with the game, and they just dropped yet another patch. Like, seriously, they developed this game so ridiculously quickly that even if you're actively playing it like five, six hours a week, eventually they're going to patch while you're in the middle of stuff. And so anyways, I've wanted to play the game for a long time. It's a game that I'm very passionate about. I love oceanography. I studied it a lot when I was in college. And so honestly, when it comes to stuff like this, I'm a little bit of a salty sucker. I guess that's a little punny considering the ocean is salty. And not really. I don't know. Either way, I know this is probably going to surprise a lot of you because I said I wasn't going to do this. But I sat down this morning and I really just didn't feel like playing anything else. I was like, well, I could do nothing today or I could play Subnautica, which sounds super attractive. So we're going to do that. Let's start off on a new game. We're going to be playing this thing on survival mode. I'm not going to do hardcore. You can lose a lot of work that way, and if I was playing by myself, maybe, but since we're doing a YouTube series, I'm going to keep it to survival so that we don't lose everything when we go down. As it stands, survival mode right now, it means that you need oxygen, you need to watch your health, you got to watch your water consumption and your food consumption. However, when you die, you drop your items, but you don't drop all of them, and you don't die forever, which is a little bit concerning. Creative mode, I've actually never even done, which is kind of... Interesting, I actually wasn't even aware that that was a thing. But anyways, let's get survival mode started because there's going to be a lot of preliminary work that we've got to knock out before we get everything done in this game. There's going to be a little bit of a runway for us to... The game has become actually a lot more difficult than it used to be. It takes a long time to accomplish things in Subnautica now versus before where you could just bang out the content in like four hours because it was basically a resource farm. Now the game is a bit more nuanced than that. Well, welcome to our crash site. We are actually, are we on the planet right now? I'm not sure where we are, but we got to extinguish the fire here. Let's grab our extinguisher, which is aptly named for its ability to do just that. Come on, extinguisher. Let's get this thing done. I am Gormak the extinguisher. Yeah, that would be a dope nickname. Come on. Greetings, survivor. Great job not dying. To assist you in further survival in emergency situations, you have been issued this personal data assistant. The interface visible now will organize your inventory, display currently available construction blueprints, and holds other valuable information. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with it. I am familiarized, snarky robot. I don't really want this fire extinguisher though. I don't think that's going to help us in a world of water. I don't think there's going to be a lot of fire in a world where everything is liquid. I mean, I think we'll probably be okay since none of those are flammable. So there's some new stuff they've added to the game right now. They've got this med kit fabricator, which is actually pretty cool stuff. It allows you to get a med kit like every day or so. Like every day or so, it makes a med kit for you so that you can heal yourself without having to farm up the materials. We've got a storage container over here which should have some things in it. It's got a flare, it's got some filtered water in case we get thirsty along the way, which, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, we will. A nutrient block, which is every bit as appetizing as it sounds. It's basically just like rabbit kibble all cobbled together into a brick. You could build a house out of it or you could eat it. It's up to you. Your colon thanks you, though, if you don't. It seems like one of those things that's probably going to get stuck in the piping somewhere. You're going to have to get your doco lace or whatever the hell that medication is. There's like this medication that doctors will prescribe you that it like soaps up your insides. Like that's basically all that it is. You're swallowing soap and it covers your insides with soaps so that you poop all the time. It's 
Called like Doco Lace or Doco Lace or something like that. This is the Fabricator, sorry. Medical Factoids with Splatter Cat. I don't know how I get off on these tangents every single time I play a game. Every single time. So there's lots of stuff we can build. The game is actually a little bit tiered now. It's a tad different than it used to be. But one of the first big things we're going to want to do, it says warning multiple errors detecting life pod power. We're going to need to get a welder and we're going to need to fix our life pod. The life pod is actually a pretty good tool even once you get further into the game. It's just that it requires a little bit of patching up. Right now it's dinged, it's dented, it's not entirely too happy. They probably cut corners. It, it would make sense. Local radiation levels. Trend is consistent with ongoing degradation of the Aurora's dark matter drive core due to damage sustained during collision. Continuing to monitor. It, it's entirely possible that whatever corporate megastructure was responsible for a ship of this size Probably didn't figure. I mean, a ship that big is going to be hard to kill. It's going to be real hard to kill. However, that considered, they probably cut corners on the lifeboats. They were like, ah, what are the chances that something's going to sink our. It's the Titanic. It's, it's that Titanic mentality. Nothing can sink this. Not even to Jesus. Let's go down into the water and welcome to the world of. Oh, there's stalkers right next to. That's not good. That is deeply upsetting. Now, the game does have a lot of chugging. If you ever notice that the frame rate just, like, dies, that's because the game kind of systematically loads whatever is next. So, the game is, like, divided up into little square areas, and when you pass the boundary in between those areas, it has to load the next area over. And so, you will see some frame drops in this game. It's just part of playing the game. It happens when you're not recording. It happens when you are. It's happened to just about everybody I've seen so far. The game is not optimized in that regard, but it's not that big of a deal because the game is fun, and that's all that it takes. Things are belching at us. See, under the sea, nobody has any manners. Under the sea, nobody has a sing. They fart, they belch, they do whatever they want. They assume people can't hear. We've got lead. So we've picked up lead, which leads the race for the minerals we're going to find today. I don't like these noises. Man, we started off kind of in a hostile spot. It can change things around slightly with where you start from what I can tell. The map is not, as far as I know, randomly generated. I think it is a static map, but I think the pod moves around a little bit when it wants to deploy you somewhere. Those are farty beasts right there. I don't actually know what they're called. I call them farty beasts because when you get near them, they shoot diarrhea everywhere and it clouds up the water and hurts you. It's They're not, like, actively hostile, but they are... I, I just avoid, like in my adventures, I try not to get diarrhea all over me if I can help it, and that's precisely what we're... Oh, really? They changed the way salt looks. It stands out more now. See, they've changed that. Even I haven't played the game in about a week and a half, and they've changed that since the last time I played. we got some quartz along the bottom right here. Some lovely prismatic quartz. And then we've got some more salt over here. Sounds good to me. This right here is actually a research module, so if you wanted to get new stuff to build, we now have to scan these. The scanning exists in previous iterations of the game, but it's much more important now than it used to be. Like, you have to scan a lot. Like, we don't just get the Cyclops anymore. We don't just get the sea moth anymore. You've got to scan a bunch of stuff to get it, and that actually does help pad the gameplay a little bit. and forces you to work on objectives on the side because you can't guarantee that you're going to find the right stuff to scan within any reasonable amount of time. Like, it took me forever in our stream to get like 80% of the parts together for the Cyclops. The Sea Moth wasn't too bad. The Sea Moth took a little while. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Sea Moth is basically like a little submarine that shoots torpedoes. The Cyclops is a giant submarine that can house your Sea Moth and has a whole bunch of like you can build inside of it. That's an egg right there. That's not underwater spherical dookie. I know that was probably your first thought too that something's dropping like, I don't know, little rabbit pellets around here. Although I'd hate to see the size of the rabbit that could drop that pellet. Still, nonetheless, that's an egg. You can actually incubate and hatch eggs now and get, like, pet fish and do all kinds of random things. They don't actually help you in any utilitarian sort of way right now, but it's still fun, like, growing fish and stuff like that. I mean, that right there is an air sac. Hooray! Don't grip him by his throat like that, man. Put him out of his mitts. God, you can't just grab him. Just finish him off real fast. You don't have to carry him around by his neck. I don't know. I like animals. I like animals. And if we gotta rip this, if we gotta kill one, we gotta do this quick. Rip it off like a band-aid. It's for survival purposes only. Some copper ore right there. I think initially what I'd like to oh, I'm out of I'm out of oxygen. Hold on. I think initially what I'd like to focus on. God, this game still creeps me out. You know that? Like sitting on the surface of the waves like this, it's something primal. I think that deep down, because we're some we're, we're like we're like heavily evolved like plains monkeys. I just being on the ocean for some reason strikes something instinctual for me and that instinctual something is screaming don't do it why are you here right now 
This is not your environment. This is the realm of the sharks, and even worse, the orcas. This is not where you're supposed to be. And I'm like, yes, I know that instinct. Thank you. I didn't plan to be ejected out of a giant spaceship and thrown down onto a water planet. This was not my goal. Luckily, they gave us, like, a wetsuit and everything, so... At least we were prepared. It kind of seems like they knew this was going to happen. Like, why would you have wetsuits and stuff? Unless water planets are really, really common, and since... I don't study astronomy. I wouldn't know one way or the- Oh, no, 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 no. Ow, my ass. So that thing right there is called a crash. They're like these little suicidal, they're like jihadi fish that pop out of the little- There's a hall show you. It's a crash. It's called a crash bed or a crash nest or something like that. So right there. This is it. And you can actually get crash meal out of there too. So apparently when the crash is poop, it's like nitroglycerin or something like that. You can clean out their nests for- Oh, they changed the way- Is that a peeper? Oh, it's a whole fish. Not just a half fish or a quarter fish. A whole fish. That's kind of interesting. That's a new type of fish. I've never seen that. Oh, it's nighttime. I don't like this at all. Let's go back to the surface. Gonna hang out inside my pod. You know, honestly, with some of the things that are on the planet at this point, you guys don't even know the horror that this game has in it right now. There's all kinds of, like, undersea emperors. It's bad. It's really, really bad. Like, I don't want to sugarcoat it at all, so I won't. And it's not gonna happen. This is gonna be bitter. But there are things in this ocean that are really, really bad. And not just like kinda bad, like really bad. Like insanely bad. Like things inside your submarines that you will see and be like, oh my god. Degradation of the Aurora's drive core may cause a quantum detonation. Calculating risk assessment. Death by malnourishment, 7%. By physical injury, 11%. By exposure to radioactive crash site materials, 19%. If the drive core is breached, probability of death increases to 65%. Man, you're just a little ray of sunshine, aren't you? How about you tell me the chances that I'm going to survive and then multiply them by, say, like 30 or 40 or maybe like 100? Just so I can feel better. Just so I can feel like I've got like a shot. And just don't mention the multiplication that's taking place. Just let me live in ignorance for right now. We can fix this right here, and then we get messages from, like, other people and stuff. The game's got all kinds of things added to it right now. So inside the fabricator, we've picked up quartz. We need creep vine seed clusters to make silicone rubber. We've got the metal salvage, which will give us some titanium. So there we go. We will fabricate some lumps right there and see if there's anything we can do with it. We can make magnesium out of salt, which is kind of weird. The uh, alchemy involved in turning NaCl into magnesium seems a little suspect. But hey, if we got magical powers, let's Harry Potter this bitch up for Gryffindor! I will shoot you with my magical wand. What was the point of the wands? Like, I'm all on board with Harry Potter until the wands. Like, wands are just... Why couldn't they each have, like, staves or something? You know, like, why, why are wands necessary? Staves are pretty badass. Wands, on the other hand, I'm like, aha, I'm coming at you with this small piece of branch. I will wiggle it. And it doesn't even matter that you're about to blow up half the planet with your wizard magics. It's... You're waving a stick at me, man. It just... It doesn't have the intended effect. I don't mean for it to be overly disparaging, like, do you, wizard boo. But still, we can make a waterproof locker, and I can drop that. It's probably a good idea. We're gonna need a lot of storage space before this is all over. We can build bases, though, which we'll probably get on at some point. I don't know exactly how I want to do that. A cured air sac. We can turn the air sacs into filtered water, which I think is a wise idea, and in fact, what I'm going to do right now. Where did we get the bottle from? I don't know. I assume this is technology like they have in Star Trek, where you just, like, replicate. You want something, and you're like, mm, replicator, make me a cheeseburger, and it's like, who? Where do they get the raw elements, though, for the cheeseburger? Like, how do you know exactly what all the constituents are that go into the cheeseburger to, like, program the replicator? The future is going to be a crazy, crazy place. I don't like cooking, so the replicator sounds fantastic to me. I'd be like, uh, replicator, make me one of those bomb-ass steaks that you get from Cattleman's. Or maybe, I don't know, make me from Tahoe Joe's one of those, one of those railroad burger thingies that they have. Can you do that? It's like, replicating. I will burger your bitch ass off. And I'm like, yay! He's burgering my bitch ass off. <laughs> Who knew, everybody? Who knew? He's burgering my bitch ass off. I wasn't aware that my ass had that particular set of constraints and or modifiers, adjectives, and descriptors, but... You know, I guess you work towards your at- Oh, they're shitting in the water again. Goody, you guys are disgusting, you know that? This is a public area. 
you don't have to do that. You share this area with so many other creatures. If they wanted to make it accurate, there should be a bunch of little fish now going after their duty in the water. Just like grabbing it and eating it and just having like a great old time. It's a smorgasbord! Because that happens in the ocean. Everything is kind of symbiotic in the ocean, kind of. I don't know if symbiotic's the right word. I want you, peeper. Oh my god, you're so hard to catch. I also want to pet one of these. I don't know what it is, but I want it to be my pet. I want to hang out with it. The creep vine cluster things we need in order to make lubricant for undersea fun. All we have is dolphins to entertain ourselves with. Dolphins and lubricant. You can decide for yourself how you want to pass the time, but I know what I'm going to be getting up to. And then we also need it to make rubber, I think. And so we just need to sneak in here and hopefully not get bit and or murdered by anything. Okay, so our inventory is full of creep vine seed clusters. You can't really do much else with these. I think later on I can use them as like a fuel source and there's a few things you can do with them, but largely you're gonna be using them to farm silicone. And one of the big things that I like to do in the early game is I gotta get myself some flippers, I gotta get myself a new air tank, and I think we have the materials to do that. Now be aware, this thing does have limited power. At the top of the screen, 57 out of 75, that's how much power your pod has. It will recharge once you repair it. So we're gonna have to go in and if we repair some of these self-charging cells, and then we also repair the life pod systems, things should be a little bit better for us and it'll recharge a little bit more rapidly. But up until we get that done, we're kind of on our own right now and we just wanna say, mm, we need glass in order to make another, another tank. Okay, I think I can make that happen. I will go with a glass right there. So there goes some of the quartz that we picked up off the bottom of the ocean. Utilitarian uses for minerals. O2 tank right there and it should auto equip that, I think take a look at my inventory here and so yeah there's the tank right there this one is an okay tank this one will get you by but don't depend on this one for too long later on you don't stack tanks anymore in previous iterations of the game you could stack tanks and having like four or five tanks in your inventory the trade-off was that it would eat up a bunch of your inventory space but you could stay underwater for like four or five minutes doesn't work like that anymore you have an o2 tank that you can equip and there are different versions of it so there's one that is the well there's the basic default version there's one that has an extended capacity there's another one that's built to do something it's like lighter or streamlined or something so that you swim faster the basically they've given you options and i actually appreciate that i like how it goes in different Local radiation readings exhibit characteristics consistent with total degradation of the aurora's dark matter drive core a quantum detonation will occur with a probability of 85.5% Advise observing a one kilometer safety range. I don't think one kilometer is going to make me safe from the fallout of like a nuclear explosion. A nuclear explosion! I don't think we're going to be safe. Nonetheless, I am going to titanium up. That'll give us a few more materials to play around with. I'm thinking that I want silicone rubber right now. And if I have enough of that, I think I can make some flippers so that we can swim a little bit faster. I don't know if you've noticed, but everything else in the water seems to be a little bit more spry and a little bit better equipped for these environs than we are. And I, I would like to give ourselves some form of advantage. I love swimming with fins on. I like swimming in general. My family's Hawaiian. And so if you don't swim, it's considered like a weird thing. I, it's a cultural thing. I really sincerely think it is because everybody in my family swims like a fish. We've got that right there and looks forward to the opportunity. Like, I love swimming. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. If I could spend all day in the pool, that's a great day for me. Although I do enjoy swimming in the ocean, too. If I can snorkel or anything like that, I do enjoy it. I haven't gotten my scuba certification. My dad has his. My uncles all have theirs. And so I have this rough feeling that I'm expected to get mine at some point. Haven't done it yet, though, but I do want to go scuba diving at some point, especially in like a tropical environment, like back in Hawaii, for example. I would definitely love to do that at some point. I've been snorkeling when I went back home to visit family a couple times, which was really, really fun. I enjoyed snorkeling a lot. We got way out in the ocean, though, because it stays shallow forever. Like, the shelf or whatever doesn't happen for a while. Like, we went way out there. Gotta be careful about the tides, though. They try to get you. It's easy to panic when the tides get after you. If you're being pulled out by a tide and you feel like you can't swim back to shore, swim back diagonally. It seems like an odd thing to bring up right now, but since we're on the subject... Don't try to swim directly back to shore if you're being pulled out to sea. Swim diagonally. That's how you get back. It'll take a while. It'll feel like you aren't moving, but don't panic. It'll be it'll be cool. You'll be fine. I promise. Panicking is what gets people out there, man. You see it every single time you go out in the ocean. 
lifeguards going out with the whistle, grabbing people because they weren't quite prepared for what was about to happen. We don't want to get too close to the ship because there's radiation we have to deal with. But there may be something useful in some of these boxes around. So there's a solar panel fragment. I... There's a big... Is that a forklift? There's a forklift, just in case you wanted a forklift. Just in case you lack the mighty wrists required in order to elevate food to your mouth. The forklift is here to help you. I feel like we should name more things like the forklift. Just give them names of what they do. Like, it's not a spoon, it's a food scoop. You know, like, just name it what it is. Why do we always have to make everything all metaphorical and draw for, like, Latin roots and stuff like that? I just, I don't understand. Just call it a food scoop. The, the, the fork can be a food stabber or a food spear, you know? A vittle spear. Ooh, I like that better. The vittle spear plus four. Yeah. I think that's what I'd get after. For right now, we really, this is one of those games where it's easy to float around aimlessly and not accomplish anything. We should probably set goals in front of ourselves, like objectives, things we want to accomplish in between here and the coming episodes to make sure that we have all the things in place that we need to have in place in order to make our survival that much more comfortable. And for right now, I would suggest farming out a little bit of copper. I would suggest, oh, there's another egg down there. I would suggest so these little guys right here. Getting a little bit of titanium, a little bit of copper would probably be advised. Titanium can be gotten by just picking up the metal salvage. If you got a bunch of metal salvage with you, you should be perfectly fine. We got nine seconds of air left. I'm going back up to the top. We'll go ahead and bang this out. In the Aurora's drive core, the central dark matter reactor will reach a supercritical state in T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Alright. So the Aurora has apparently gone the way of the buffalo, which I don't know what direction that is, what way that... Oh good, we're being irradiated right now. Oh look at that, they added little fragment things that fire all over the place. You see those little vapor trails right there from things flying around? That's cool. Like, they make little modifications to this game, and every single time I play it, I notice, like, new things that they've added that weren't there before just to kind of sell the experience. The Aurora is Nomura. That thing has blown up. Well, what I'd like to focus on for right now is we need to get ourselves a knife. We need to get ourselves some basic equipment. Copper would be great, too, because we are going to be making a lot of electronics later on. And so, honestly, grabbing ourselves a fistful of that stuff. What are you guys? Like, what are you doing here? Can I grab you? You seem like you might bite or have like a stinger or something. There would be, can you imagine landing on a planet like this and being like the first caveman? You're the guy that's got to test out everything that's poisonous and like everything that's deadly. That would suck. There's no way you're going to make it. It's just like we benefit right now from thousands and thousands of years of people screwing up and dying. That is just the nature of human existence right now. Like, we benefit from the fact that we know we're not supposed to eat that thistle over there. Because at some point, some guy ate the thistle and died. And then the entire tribe was like, yo, don't eat that thistle anymore. And we were like, cool, let's write that down on the list. I think you can weld it. Oh. What is this? What? These didn't open before. An abandoned PDA. I don't know if that did anything. Oh, that one's sealed. There's no air pocket in here either. You would expect there to be, but most people, you probably don't want to, if you're in like a place like this, you probably don't want to breathe in air pockets that have been underneath the ocean for a while because you don't know what gases and what materials have dispersed into that little pocket right there. I know you always see people do it like in movies and stuff like that where they go up to like the top of a pocket inside of a sunken ship. They're like, <gasps> oxygen! But you never know. You, you never know. You might be breathing something that's really, really hard on your lungs. And I mean, yeah, you gotta breathe to live, but if it's gonna kill you instantaneously, well, I guess you can take your pick. Pick your poison. But if you're in a situation like this, where you can leave that little pot over there and go up to the surface, just go up to the surface. Don't breathe the air in the little pocket. Just a recommendation. I don't know if it's a good recommendation. It would just logically seem to me as though you probably wouldn't want to do that. Well, we need a knife. We need... So how's my inventory space? Our inventory space is golden. We got everything we need right now. Let's pick up some of this scrap a lap -a dang dong and we'll take it on back to the ship. I can probably fit another one. Yeah, I'm going to front stock a little bit of titanium here. 
because I do feel like it's a good idea. That noise freaks me out every time, but I know it's just them. It's nothing that actually wants to kill me. Those things are docile for the most part. Just don't go near them. Just don't go near them. It'll end badly for you. Into the escape pod. Gonna fabricate a bunch of shit out of the stuff we found on the bottom of the ocean. All right, well, that's pretty good for our first day here in Subnautica. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me. This was just kind of an on a whim series. I wasn't actually planning on playing this today. But I sat down and thought to myself, I feel like playing Subnautica right now. So that's what I did. I hope you guys will enjoy. I don't know the frequency with which this is going to be updated. If it's going to be a mainline series or anything like that, I may just play here and there. If I do end up spacing it out that way, I'll try to make the episodes longer, make them a little bit more girthy and pleasing. But up until I make the organizational call, I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Check out Subnautica down below if you wanted to get the game for yourself and adventure alongside my progress.